Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning service. Hallelujah. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we say thank you again for another beautiful day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this fifth Sunday where we have open house, where we entertain questions from any and everyone, Lord God. We know that you know how to answer all of our concerns because you're God. And you know the question that's going to be posed to you today because you're God. So we thank you, right? Hallelujah. We thank you right now in advance for all that you've done, will do, and continue to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. This Praise Sunday Lord. morning service, our fifth Sunday, what we call open house. Normally we have visitors come and you can ask any question you want, but obviously because we can't meet, uh, we still allow you to type in your questions. We have eight different, nine different uh, avenues that you can reach us through uh, different Facebook accounts, different uh, uh, Instagram accounts. Uh, I don't know if you can go online if you're watching it live stream, if you can type, and I don't know about YouTube, but we're getting there. We're getting there because it looks like we're going to be uh, in this restriction for some time. But in the meantime, today, you can ask God any question or you can ask me any question, however you want to pose it. But I, I, I know people have concerns about uh, the thing with the, the gentleman being murdered and, and with all of the, the rioting all over the United States. And I'm just going to address that a little bit, a little bit. Um, and I don't, and I probably won't entertain any other questions regarding it because, and here's, here's the main reason. The church is not here because of prejudice. We're not, not here. We're here because of sin. We don't identify sin in the scriptures the way you all identify sin in the world because you know, uh, 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 Jesus cleared that up when he says neither bond nor free, neither Jew nor Gentile. He cleared all that up. So he said, wipe prejudice out. Now, if I'm in the body of Christ, prejudice has to go. So if, if you're claiming to be saved, you're claiming to know Christ, if you're claiming to be a Christian, you have to live by the rules of this book. And this book says we don't address that. Let the world address that. We are in the world, we're not of it. So therefore, we don't have to worry about it. Those type of thing won't happen to save people unless you go out there living like the devil. Now, if you live like the devil, expect things to happen. Because he said they, don't, they do not carry the sword in vain. Back then, they didn't have guns. They had swords. And they would punish you accordingly, just like we do today. I'm not going to get into who's wrong and who's right. Because if you're not saved, you're wrong. I don't care what you wear, what kind of uniform you wear, if you don't wear a uniform. If you're not saved, so if you're gonna be in the world, expect to get treated like the world. Now, with all of the rioting and stuff, anybody, you know, any wrong, you know it's wrong. Let me, let me say it this way. Anything that is wrong, you know it's wrong. But the only solution to wrong is Jesus. There is no other solution to wrong. Uh, you, uh, uh, how do you say, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, the Bible tells us, even as saints, we can't pick it and, and protest. We can't. All of that is written in the book of Timothy. Amen. And Jesus even said it too. So it's, it's no need for you to ask me questions about why did God allow this? God don't allow nothing. Just like you sitting in your house not getting high. God allowing that. You know, are you drinking? Are you cussing? Are you shacked up? You sleeping around? You having babies? You ain't married? God allow that. We are the one that identify sin, uh, uh, a particular sin. And God, I, all of it is sin, and it's all punishable by death. So when, 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 when the rapture come or when judgment come, God is not going to ask you how many, you, how many times you did this. He's going to ask you, did you break my law? The answer is yes or no. So I want you to take that to be your answer about anything that got to do with all of the confusion. And, you know, I've, I've already addressed the, the virus and the pandemic. God said he sent it. God said there's going to be wars and rumors of war. God said there's going to be pestilence. There's going to be a famine for the word. Men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. The world is going to be like Solomon and Gomorrah when he come back. So God didn't answer all of y'all questions. 
The thing about it, y'all just don't like the answers. Y'all want him to say something specific. Well, what do you want him to say? Stop sinning. Amen. I wasn't out looting because I'm saved and I know it's wrong. Even if I wasn't saved, I wouldn't have done it because I know it's wrong. And that's why I was trying to tell you that in Sunday school, listen, the mission is to get you to stop sinning and the rest of this stuff goes away. Amen. I don't buy whiskey because I don't drink because it's a sin. Amen. So the liquor store can stay open all it want. I'm never going to walk in there and buy nothing but a bag of potato chips and a host of cupcake. Amen. And I see all the whiskey on the shelves, all of the Budweiser's and the, and the beers. I can't even remember the name of the beers as much as I used to drink. Amen. Because I'm moving that stuff out. And always remember this, evil communication, corrupt, good manner. And with that, I will say amen. And I will entertain the first question. I know we have them and we have staff here that's going to read them off to me. So you all type them in and send them to me. Question number one. Amen. I just want to be changed. Never been straight, but I've been praying for years for God to turn my lifestyle around for me so I can get into his kingdom one day. You say they never been straight. Are they yeah. saying? Like I never been straight. I Meaning guess. Meaning walking right? I, I assume uh, like I. Well, I guess it really doesn't st matter. Straight regardless how you look at it. Lifestyle like if you, if you like right. girls or boys. Now like read like it to me again. It I'm said, sorry. I got stuck on that. I just want to be changed. Never been straight. But I've been praying for years for God to turn my lifestyle around for me so I can get into his kingdom one day. So I take it. Uh, no, you, no, I'm, I'm, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was just wondering what scripture that I wanted to take the individual to because, it, it, you know, I, I, and, and that's a, I like that question. That's a very good question because there's so many ways I can answer that. And I guess that's why I'm, I'm getting my thoughts together and I'm praying because the only way to get straight is really to get saved. Now, here's the question, you know. Where and where do you go get saved? How do you know you're saved? I can only preach for me for COA or speak for me. Come here. Come here. That's all I can tell you. Come here. You, you're listening to me, obviously, a little bit or some. And so you, uh, must be something you like, um, uh, something that I'm saying that you like. But come here. Even if you text me. Well, you can't text me, but if you, if you email me or send me some type of message and we can meet and I can talk to you one-on-one, -on -one. because see, at the end of the day, you have to be saved. There's, there's no solution out there. What is an additional part to the question or something? Yes, uh, I've been a lesbian all my life, and yes, I'm always listening to you. Yeah. Come to church. Come and meet with me first, you know, because... Again, I would like to say, you got to get saved. You, you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. You have to get the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So I'm not going to tell you to wake up tomorrow and don't do what you've been doing. Now, I can say that, and I know it's going to be a big struggle for you not to do that, especially if you like it. You know, sin is something you have to stop because you don't like it. Now, obviously, you don't like what you're doing, so don't do it anymore. Now, in doing that, you have to separate yourself. You, you, you got to come from around the people that's influencing you. And you got to get away from the thing. You know, I, I was a, I was a, uh, that's why when I, I, I say that I was a chief sinner, I was a good whore. Good whore. Now, y'all may say that sound wrong. Listen, I know what I was out there, you know. And I wanted to stop, but I couldn't stop. Now, me being a whore, sleeping with women, is really no different than what you are doing. It's just that you chose the same sex. And God is, is mad or was mad at me and mad at you, but he's here to help you. The only way to help you, you got to do it the way he tells you to do it. I could not keep drinking and say, well, I'm going to stop sleeping around, but I'm going to keep drinking. Drinking is the one that promoted, provoked me to do it a lot of times. Because when you get intoxicated, your brain just goes there. So when you, when you, may, you may say, I'm going to come from around the people, but then you got to put down everything that was associated with you doing that particular sin. So that means you got to stop everything. Now, again, the only way to stop, the 
only way to stop, man, and my heart goes out, the only way to stop, you have to get saved. You hear me preach about all kinds of sin. I don't hate anyone. I hate sin. So come to see me. Let's get you baptized. If you don't understand it, I'll explain it to you. You should know where the church is at. Send me an email or, you know, or send me your phone number. You don't have to make it public. You send me an email. Won't nobody get it but me. And it's Jay Portis at churchofapostolicity.org. Y'all put that up so everybody can have it. Send me an email and we can make an appointment. We'll sit down. I meet with you. We'll talk. We'll get you baptized. You get the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Then, now here comes, now see, that's the, that's the uh, uh, a hard step. See, people think living holy is hard. Is accepting the true way of Christ is the hard part. Now you got to live holy. The only way you can do that, you have to come to church. You have to listen. That's why you hear me, you've heard me say that I tell alcoholic, don't stop drinking. Don't wait till you stop drinking to come to church. Come to church while you're drinking. You can walk in here drunk. I bet you. I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to sober you up. After a while, you're going to go out to have that drink and you're going to say, uh-uh, uh-uh, this is wrong. This is wrong. You know, and it's the same if you if you lesbian, homosexual, alcoholic, dope head, dope dealer. If you, <coughs> excuse me, if you keep coming, trust me, me and God will preach it out of you. But you got to keep coming. You can't hit and miss. Amen. Because every time you come to church, you're going to come here looking for an answer to a specific or speci uh, particular or specific question. And I can guarantee you. I've been saved since I was 29, 28 and a half, really. God have answered every question I have ever, ever had when I came to church. Amen. And you got to hear it from a preacher. God is not going to come down and answer none of your questions. That's my job. Amen. And you hear them say, I'm the BPITW, the best pastor in the world. You know why? Because I preach about sin and I deal with reality. I I'm not here to make you feel good because we, we all messed up. I'm here to make you feel bad so you can stop doing or show you how wrong you are in what you're doing because I want you out of it. I want you out of it. So you say, what do you have to do? Contact me. And let's get you saved. Now, when I say let's get you saved, I personally can't get you saved. I can point you in the right direction. No matter what I preach, it's always going to point you to Jesus. No matter what I say, I'm always point you to Jesus. I don't have no way else to point you because that's where I'm headed. So I'm going to take you where I'm going, and that's to Jesus Christ. Again, you got to get baptized in Jesus' name. Not in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You can't get sprinkled like the Catholic. I got to take you down in some water, your whole body. I got all of the clothes you need. You don't need any clothes. Nobody, nobody is going to look down on you at Church of Apostolicity. If they do, you tell me. I straighten everybody out from the old, the, the young, the mamas, the daddy, the husband and wives. I straighten everybody out. Nobody's going to look down on you. I know we don't have that problem here because we all done come from some places. Hallelujah. We've come from some places. I'm the only one bold enough to say it on a regular basis. Amen. So, but we've come from some places and you come here, you get saved. I guarantee you, honey, I guarantee you, God can get you right at Church of Apostolicity. That, that's the best way I can answer that because I know how you feel. If you feel like the way I heard that question, I've been there. It's like, man, I don't know what else to do. I don't, I don't know. Everybody done lied to me. Nothing worked. Church of Apostolicity works. Amen? Next question. I was baptized in Jesus' in Jesus name, but I haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, but I went back out sinning. Do I need to get baptized again? No. You need to make sure they say it in Jesus' name because some of these slick Rick pastors, they say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the God, all in Jesus' name. That, yes, you got to get baptized again. Don't, you can't put all of that stuff in there. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Now, if it was straight Jesus' name, you don't need to be baptized no more, and you went back out in sin because you never had the power to stop sinning because you never got the Holy Ghost. Listen. You, everybody that don't have the Holy Ghost, 
know most sins, recognize most wrong as sins. They may not call it that, but they know when they're doing stuff, it's wrong. The problem is, let me say this for you. you, you there's a scripture that people capitalize on where Jesus said the, the, the holy, I mean, the kingdom of God is within you. And they say, see, you already say, no, no, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying, you have the knowledge of what's wrong and right by the kingdom of God. In other words, you know how to live right on this earth. You don't have the power to do it. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. When you steal, you know you're wrong stealing. But why do you keep stealing? So now you got, when you get the Holy Ghost, you got the power. That's why you went back out to sin. Because you left with no power. You didn't have the power. Now, can you go back out and do wrong with the power? Yes, you can. But I'm going to tell you something. It'll eat you alive. Because now you got the Holy Ghost on the inside. It's not the same. And that's why he tell you it's, it's the way of a transgressor is hard. Because when you, oh, hallelujah, when you get saved, it's not easy to sin. Especially when you're being taught the right way to be reminded. See, the problem with most people, they are not reminded what sin is and when they are sinning. So they can go back out and they still have something that's bothering them. But listen, when you get saved at Church of Apostles, listen to I'm going to send you home scared every day. Amen. Somebody told me one time, they said, Pastor Porter, you preach like nobody going to make it. I said, that's exactly the way I want to preach, like nobody going to make it. That'll make you work hard at making sure you make it. Because if I preach to you smooth things that the Bible says, you're not going to do right. Listen, listen, we are some hard knock folks. We don't need nobody, especially this day and time, we don't need nobody rubbing over sin. You ain't going to get there. You already hard knocked. I mean, just think about it. We do, some, we do some stuff, man. You know, we need somebody to hit us in the lip on a regular basis. And then on top of all of that, the scripture said, it's my job to warn you. I have to constantly make you aware that you're right in the midst of hell and heaven and you don't know which direction you're going. You better pay attention. Because if you die today, however the tree fall, that's the way it's going to lay. In other words, if you die in sin, you're going to get up in sin. Don't expect to die in sin and get up righteous. Don't, that's not possible. So if you went back out in the world, and of course, I'm going to say, come see me. Come see me. I, I know I can tell you the truth. I don't vouch for nobody but me. I know a lot of pastors, but I'm the only one I'm going to vouch for, and that's me. Because I can talk to them, what they say when they behind that pool pit, because I don't listen to other preachers, because we all in service at the same time. And when I go home, I'm too tired to sit there and listen to something. I need to come down. But I can make sure I'm going to tell you the truth. You're never going to walk out of here with a lie. And then everything I tell you is going to come out of here. If it doesn't, if it's not in here, I won't tell you. That's a, that's, and that's my law. If it's not in here, I won't preach it. Amen? Dee Dee, you have one. Is masturbating a sin when of you are course. married? If I'm so, sorry, why? Go ahead. Say it again. <laughs> Is masturbation a sin when you are married? If so, why? Help me find the scripture. How did that scripture go? Give me a second, y'all. Um, in the Old Testament, when the man was supposed to make love to his wife, and God told him, and he let it hit the, he let it hit the ground. Um, I don't know how the scripture go. But why y'all figure that out for me? Y'all figure that out. I said it right. I just can't come up with the, the words. I want to say seed, when he let his seed hit the ground or something like that. Oh, man. But yes, now I'm going to address the question why y'all see if y'all can find that for me. Any form of sex that's not natural with man and woman is a sin. So when you say masturbating, is it a sin? What are you doing? You are committing fornication with yourself. The Bible put, Paul puts it this uncleanliness. Amen. He put it, uh, uh, another word he used is lasciviousness. Another word he used um, um, when he says something about man, um, man. Give me a second. Filthiness of the flesh. That's the word I'm looking for. He said that's filthiness of the flesh. So yes, it's a sin. And you should not do it. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, 
when, when men do it, it leads them into homosexuality, and when, when women do it, it leads them into lesbian. What you gotta understand, sin is progressive. It never stops right here. You keep doing it. It's something about the human brain. When you keep doing something with the same person, all of a sudden you want that person. So if you're a man and you keep doing it, for you, you're gonna want a man after a while. So don't, don't, don't play with it. And if you're a woman, you're gonna want a woman after a while. Cause the brain say a man keep doing this, a man keep doing this, a man keep doing it. And a woman is saying a woman keep doing this, a woman keep doing it, a woman. And then that's how a lot of people go out and try the different sex because you've trained your brain to do something, hallelujah. You've trained your brain to do something that's abnormal in your brain. So yes, it's a sin. Did y'all find it? It's not, is it Genesis? I don't think it's in Genesis. It's in Genesis? Okay, let's go to Genesis. What is it? Can't hear you. Genesis 38.9. So I way off. So Becky, it's been a long time since I read it. <coughs> yeah, y'all good. All right. Genesis 38. I don't want to start at nine. Well, I guess I, well, I don't. Hold on, give me a second. Let's, let's start at verse eight. Let's start at verse eight. I'm going to show you, now I'm showing you how powerful a man's seed is. See, a lot of y'all don't know this. A man's seed is very powerful. Uh, 38, 8, he said, well, and Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. One of the things, excuse me, one of the things back there, back then, if, 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 you, if, if a brother had a wife and he died and didn't have kids, the other brother had to marry the wife until they could get some children, specifically boys. So Judah is the head of the tribe and, and is telling him, you go and do this. Now, you got to listen to the leader. That's why it pays to obey those who have rule over you. He said, and Onan knew that the seed should not be his. Watch this, because it ain't going to be mine. Well, technically it is. But according to the way God wrote a law, you got to give your brother credit for the first one. And he said, and it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. In other words, his sperm, when he ejaculated, he took it out and shot it on the ground. Let me tell you something. A man, every time a man's sperm come out of here, that's a life. Amen. And people don't get it. Because God has made our sperm so powerful that it touches the woman's egg and it impregnates her. That's why if you ever see a film, you see the sperm, how it goes into the egg because the, the, the egg is just sitting there. The egg is no good. That sperm is alive. And when that sperm penetrates that egg, bam, the, person, the, the woman becomes pregnant. Amen. He said, and this thing which he did that pleased the Lord. Why God mad when, when Judah told him to do it? So you see what I'm saying? So every time you do this, you see what you were doing. If, if it was a man, you know, you see what you were doing. You were caught. If they, listen, listen, you are killing something every time. You let God decide if those sperms are going to make a woman pregnant. Don't you be spilling it. You're wasting it. And then he said, the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore, if he slew him, he killed him because he didn't want to use his sperm to get his his, his, uh, his brother's wife pregnant. The second child, God said, is yours. But the first one always go get the credit at being your brother's child. That was God's law and we, you and I, we can't change the laws of God. So yes, so you see the value of you not doing this. So don't do it. It's a, it, not to mention it's just a sin anyway. But I'm showing you how deep it goes when people don't realize. You know, and it just brings something to mind how people just don't know the scripture. And I'm not picking on the person that wrote it. But I'm just showing you how deep this go. And the world teaches you it's okay. You see, no sin is okay in the eyes of God. God used Judah to tell his brother what to do, but when he disobeyed Judah, God got mad. Now that ought to tell you something. 
When God got a leader, don't disobey that leader. Because God said, because that leader is speaking for me. Just, call, just because Judah didn't say the Lord said, that guy knew the law. Listen, just because uh, I don't say the Lord said, you know the law. Amen? Next question. One, one pastor say, how to forgive someone that has tried their best to ruin our business and name? I feel it's fake. How do I respond once they apologize or do I respond? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. You said one pastor or one person? A person. Okay. Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to um, let's go to verse 21. Some good questions. I, I, I got a this is a good question. Whoever asked this is a good question. I, I gotta take out a mini sermon to give you a complete answer on this one. Sorry about that. But it's a good question, and I want you to really get a good understanding why. Why it's, now, I'm going to quote some scriptures, but I want to read the main scriptures. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 21. Because I really want you to understand, because with all of this stuff going on, I understand people, I understand humans. I got it, I'm a human. But that's why I say evil communication, corrupt good manner. Now, verse 21, he said what? Ye have heard, and it's been said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is, ang whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of judgment. Now you say you got a good reason. You say you got a good reason. I understand that. You say you got a good reason. Come on, read. And whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel. Now you say uh, uh, you can tell a person they ain't worth a dime. Look at them, they ain't worth nothing. Raka means worthless fellow. Amen. Hallelujah. And you notice God capitalized it because we are saying humans are worthless and we don't have the authority to say that. Now, the first thing, you're in danger of judgment. The second one, you're in danger of counsel. That means you're in danger of God. The counsel is you're in, you're in danger with God. Come, you coming up before God and he's got to decide what you did was wrong or right. And then he said, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. If you say that a person didn't, uh, you say a person is a fool and don't know God, God said, I'm sending you to hell for that. So I want you to understand that. Verse 23, he said what? Therefore, when thy brain thy gift to the altar, and therefore remember us, remember us. So you may say you anger with your brother and you got a cause. Bam, I go for that. You got a good reason. I got that. He said, now if you come to the altar and remember that thy brother have altar against thee. So you come to God and you pray and ask God to help your family. Say your mama's sick. Oh, Lord, help. My mom is not feeling good. But God said, you remember that somebody destroyed your business. You upset. So you remember. Now, you got a reason. See, now, he, he's answering all your questions. He said, if you don't have a reason, you're still in trouble. But you do have a reason. That's why he said, when you come and you remember what your brother have did, thou all is against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go your way. First to be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer the gift. Now, this is very strict. Very, very, very strict. And that's why I say your question is such a good question. See, you're saying that God, you want God to forgive you of all your wrong. But you haven't forgiven your brother for all his wrong. And you say, who is your brother? Any human that's living is your brother. Let's clear that up. So now you want to go to God. And because you saying he's your God, you're going to go to him and you remember what somebody else did to you. God say, first of all, let's clear this up. Drop your gift. I don't want it. Just put it there. Leave it there on the altar. Go and get right with your brother. Because if you don't get right with your brother, I'm not going to listen to you. And then he said, he said uh, uh, first to be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer the gift. But you say, well, Pastor Portis, I can't forgive him overnight. Well, you can't go to God till you get it right. Now, if it takes you four, five months, you can't go to God for five months. 
Do you want to stay away from God that long? See, the motivation here is not for you so much to remember what somebody did to you. You want to make sure you're right with God. Now, God said the only way you're going to get right with me is go and make things right. And listen, you got to go and make things right before I listen to you. I mean, in God, God said, I'm not going to hear you. You read it for yourself. Reconcile with your brother. That means go make it right. Now, you may not be able to go to the individual, say, burn your building down. You may not know him. You can't reach him. But all you got to do is say in your heart, like, Lord, help me to forgive him. You know, I don't know what the problem was. Shake it off and pack it under your feet. But you got to make, oh, glory, hallelujah. Yes. You got to make sure in your heart that you have purpose in your heart that I'm going to forgive. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, and then he say, then come back and pick up your gift and offer it to me. Now watch this. This is the good one. Agree with thine adversary quickly while as thou art in the way with him. In other words, if you do know and you watch them do wrong, agree with him before y'all depart quickly while as y'all in the way, while y'all face to face. Agree, forgive him right now and walk away. In other words, if somebody do something to you in your presence, before you hit him in the mouth, just all right, man, all right, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to walk away. Now, you may say it's not quite in my heart. Yes, it is because your actions speak louder than your word. You walked away because you know as you walk away, man, you know, hit him in his mouth. You fuss him, but you walked away. And God is impressed with that because you let you did not let your anger override your is intellect or your wisdom. Amen. He said, well, watch this. Watch what he said here. Agree with thy adversary quickly while the doubt are in the way with him. Amen. Lest at any time the adversary. In other words, the person that wronged you can deliver you to God. In other words, you can, that person can go and tell God, God, you know, John hit me in my mouth. And now, because God is the only judge, and the judge delivered thee to the officer. In other words, God take you and throw you to the angels, and the angels be, and the officer going to cast you into prison. What am I saying? A sinner, listen to me, saints, a sinner can go to God on you and get you in hell because you won't forgive them. Hallelujah. Now that doesn't mean they ain't going to hell too, but you going because you didn't forgive them because you knew you were supposed to forgive them and you chose not to do it for whatever reason. The judge is God, the officers, the angels, and we know, we know what prison is, hell, and ain't no way out of hell, hallelujah. So you got to make it up in your mind, but here's, here's the key to it all, brother. If you ain't saved, it is impossible. Amen. I'm just going to be honest with you. And when I say saved, baptize in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, and watch this. It takes practice to get to that point. So the only way you're going to get practice if somebody keep reminding you, that means you got to go to church. Somebody's got to keep reminding you to do it because folks out there are low down. Folks are evil and they can do some bar. They can do some stuff to you. And you got to be able to stand before God and say, Lord, now here's another scripture. I'm going to just quote this. If you forgive not me in their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father forgive you yours. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 26. He said, well, verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the other more fathering. So when you think you're going to come out of hell? The only debt, the only way you can pay your debt is hell eternity. So you're not coming out. God is letting you know. If God is saying, when I send y'all to hell, y'all ain't coming out. Now, you need to make sure you don't go to hell, because once you go, you're not coming out. Listen, let me tell you something. One sin can send you to hell. I've told, well, maybe I haven't said it lately. Moses was, uh, was God's friend. And God was going to kill Moses for one thing because he wouldn't circumcise his son. God told Moses in the law, he did not make a special request to Moses. The law told Moses to circumcise his son by a certain date and age. 
Moses didn't do it. God dispatched the angel to kill Moses. He went to Moses' wife and said, go circumcise that boy because I'm about to kill your husband. So she had to go and do Moses' job. Talk about a help me. I want to help me like that. Hallelujah. That when I ignore God, my wife can listen to him bail me out. Get over there and circumcise that boy because if he don't get circumcised, I'm going to kill Moses. So listen. That, that wife stopped Moses from that. Now, this is God's friend. This is somebody that God talked face to face to. And God said, but he broke my law. I'm going to kill him. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 one more thing keep coming to mind. I told you it would be a mini sermon, a mini Bible class. <laughs> Moses didn't get to go into Canaan land because he spoke to the rock one time. I mean, he hit the rock one time to get water. And the other time God told him, to speak, to, I mean, the first time God told him to smoke the rock and get water. Moses smoked the rock and water came out. The next time God said, speak to the rock and get water. Moses got so mad at the people, he smoked the rock again. God gave him water. But when he came, to God said, Moses, you ain't coming. He's like, why? What did I do? He said, that time I told you to speak to me, you smoked me. Do you realize you hit me? Now, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to let you look over there, but you ain't going. And he said, Aaron... Aaron was the first high priest. He said, by the way, you ain't going. Aaron said, what did I do? He said, when Moses hit me, you didn't say nothing. You stood right there. Evil communication corrupt good manner. You stood right there and you let Moses hit me. Now, you couldn't stop Moses from hitting me, Aaron, but you didn't correct him when he hit me. And I got a problem with that. Let me show y'all how God is. God doesn't play. Now, you and I are nowhere near close to God like Moses and Aaron was. I just be honest. Now, what do you think he'll do to us? What would you think he'd do to us? If he, was, if he, if he straightened them out, we in trouble. So you got to forgive him. And listen, now you can't do it without the Holy Ghost. I'll just be honest with you. You can practice and think and want to all you want. You're never going to succeed. Because if you could do it without the Holy Ghost, there would be no need for the Holy Ghost to be here. Amen. Amen. If, if I forgive them, do I have to speak to them? Even though they're family? Yep. Yep. If you see them, you got to be not cordial. There's a difference between cordial and loving. You got to you gotta hug them like it. And then the more, let me tell you something. The more you do it, the more you're going to forget about it. See, that's, that's the wonderful thing about it. When you're doing that, like, <laughs> you know, every time, you <laughs> see, you're remembering and you're holding on to it. But if you're like, oh, man, how you doing? Hey, what you doing? All of a sudden, it's, it's drifting out of your mind because you didn't let it go. But as long as you do it cordial, it's because you're holding it. I tell people, they say, well, how do you forgive somebody that commit adultery on you? Ah, oh, no, I'm going to divorce them. I'm going to let them go. I said, let me tell you something. You will never forgive them. That ain't true. I say, every time you see them, every time you see them, every once a year, what's the first thing going to come to your mind? That adultery, because that's why you left them in the first place. So you might as well hang in there. After you get over, after you get over what they did, then leave them. You can't not, because you're back in love with them. <laughs> Amen? So what am I saying? God said, when you forgive folks, you're back in love with them. So yes, you got to speak to them, you got to hug them, and you got to dump it in the trash. And listen, it takes work. I got that. If it didn't take work, there would be no need for the Holy Ghost. There would be no need for the preaching. I'd be out of a job. Amen. Did you have one? Yeah. Let me get Dee Dee. Are we believers? Saints? Are we what? Are we believers? He says, are we are believers? We believers, saints of the gospel of Jesus Christ to remain continually and steadfastly in all sound apostolic doctrine, teaching and preaching as pre the 11 apostles, action. An application. Hold on, hold on. You can't read to me breaking the sentences up. I, I struggle hearing you, first of all. And then when you break it up, I, I don't do too well. So you, can you just read it? Okay. Yeah. Get somebody that can see. You can't see or something? Yeah, that looks more like yeah. I don't want no comments. Come on, I have figure one. it out. I would like to understand what exactly it means when people say two or more in the presence of God is here. What, what, what does that mean when you pray alone? They crossed the question. 
They said two or three. Then they said, what do it mean you pray alone? It, it's, yeah, say like, if, it, you know how you hear it when it's two or more, God together, God right, is in the right, midst. Right. And so what does it mean when you pray alone? It's the same thing. He said, you ask anything in my name, I do it. I'm alone. He said, if two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm going to do it. In other words, God said, I don't care if it's one or 50. I'm going to do it. Here's the key in my name. And here's the second key. This is a, this is a two-edged key, so to speak. You got to do it in my name and you got to believe it. Why he said two or three? He said, because sometimes you need help in your prayer. Sometimes you need somebody to pray with you to encourage you to believe. And then somebody like me, and I ain't being arrogant, I just know God. I don't need nobody to pray with me. Because I found out in my 32 years, it's going to happen. Now, at the beginning, yes, I needed two or three. That's why y'all don't hear me praying, pray for me and pray. I don't need it. Because, listen, I don't need it. I don't need it because I know God. I love him. I serve him. I do right. It's taken. He said, John, watch this. I know what you have need of before you ask me. Now, do I really need to pray at that point? See, people don't realize God make provisions for all levels of faith. I like that, God. That's good. God make provisions for all levels of faith. Listen, listen. Jesus got to the point, at one point, he asked for help, didn't he? He didn't get it, did he? He said, y'all can't pray. But prior to that, when did he ask somebody to help him pray? That's why the Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Hallelujah. He wasn't doubting God. He needed help to make sure I'm doing what God wants me to do. But the old lazy rascals didn't pray with him. What am I saying? If you are going to be with God, there's levels of faith. I'm at the level of faith. Well, I don't need nobody to pray for me. Y'all can pray for me. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. But let's get something straight. I'm, I'm like Jesus. I know the Father here is me all the time. And I don't have to make no big hoopla. That's why when y'all see me pray opening, y'all don't see me get into no long prayer. Y'all just see me thanking God for what he's about to do. Because I already know he set this up. He made me a pastor. He started the church. He started the internet just for us. Just for me. Let me make it even more personal. I'm just, I'm just telling you this is how I feel. This is how I look at Jesus. Because everything that I have is for me. All things work together for the good for me. So there's different levels of faith. You can pray by yourself and you can pray with people. It depends on you how you feel, your faith, your request. I have no control over that. Amen? Amen? Did you get, is that a comment? Is a comment? Okay. Yes, sir. If I don't go to church, but I still believe in God, can I be saved and go to heaven? No, you're going to hell. That's that simple. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves even more so. My house shall be called the house of prayer. He said that why would he, why would, why would he, why would he have a church and everybody say, well, I don't have to go. Well, then what's the purpose of a pastor? Because I ain't coming to your house and preach no service. So without a church, there's no pastor. And then let's go to Hebrew. The one that say, um, what is it? Uh, Obey those who have rule over you. Um, Y'all find that one. I think it's 7, 13, 13, 7, something like that. Obey those who have rule over you, for they watch out for your soul. Come on. Huh? 13.7? No, not that one. It's another one. No, it's another one. It's in Hebrew. Come on, find that right quick for me. Type in rule over you, and it'll come up. Somebody, one of y'all go to the internet and stay on the internet. Huh? What? Hebrews 13, 17. 13, 17. Okay. Got it. Read. Obey them that have ruled over you and submit yourself, for they watch out for your soul, as they must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So who's going who's, who's going to speak for you? Jesus is not speaking for you. I'm sorry to disappoint y'all. Jesus is there to judge you. He's not speaking for you. Your pastor is the one that's going to speak for you. Now, so if you don't go to church, then you don't have a pastor. So who going? your mama ain't going to give an account for you. Amen? 
You're going to come up to give an account for your soul, but there's, listen, there ain't going to be no room for you to say nothing because you didn't have somebody to over. That's why pastors are under shepherds. The shepherd is with one that's responsible for the sheep. Somebody got, uh, 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 G. Grady Benton got to give an account for me. He got to get, even though I'm a pastor, he got to give an account for me. And then all he going to say, you made him a pastor, Lord. You took him out of my hand. Now he going to look at you. Because I'm a pastor, he going to look at me, rather. But if you ain't a pastor, somebody got to speak for you. And he said that that's unprofitable for you if you didn't do a good job. So you got to go to church. Why did Jesus say my house should be a house of prayer for all nations? What is prayer? Talking to God. Where do you talk to God at? At the church. The church is a building. We have to come to a designated location to talk to God, to hear the gospel, for the pastor to preach. Because otherwise, listen, the only reason that you all are getting this luxury where we can do it over these airways is because God is in the, in the process of doing something. Now, I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but this one thing I do know, the rapture, man, is close. Now, I don't know when this is going to end, and it may end with the rapture. I don't know. But I tell you this one thing, hallelujah, I better take advantage when these doors open. Amen. If, if. Now, see, I make you nervous a little bit. The Bible said there's going to be a famine in the land for the word of God. Now, to be honest with you, all of us that used to go into church, this is sort of a famine for us. Now, we get the word over the internet, but it's like it ain't the same. Amen. That's why I stagger one or two people every Sunday, because I, I know how it feels, amen, not to be able to get the word of God. And I've been coming to church ever since because I'm the preacher, and I'm still preaching. But I know how it feels not to get the word. So I'm not, y'all just better be careful. So you can play around with God all you want. But listen, the day is coming. Come on, next question. Yes. If I rarely, rarely go to, barely go to church and, and I'm confused if I'm bi or straight, can I still go to heaven? Nope. You don't go to church, number one, and you confused? So you told God, I'm not sure what you made me. Ask him. Why don't you go ask him? Mm. Now, I made this comment. And everybody got in the hoopla. Look between your legs and tell me what you see. Come on, type that in there for me. Tell me what you see, and I'm going to tell you what you are. I'm, I'm going to give you a few seconds, like my son say, I'll wait. <laughs> tell, look between your legs and tell me what you see, and I'm going to tell you what you are. You won't be confused no more. Did, did, did they type it in? <laughs> look between your legs, stick your head down there, open your legs up, and tell me what you see. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what you are. I can solve that for you quick. It ain't a complicated question. And I'm not doing it to be vulgar or, or, or smart. Because apparently you're confused. Let me, let me get you out of the confusion. I can solve it real quick for you. Because I don't know if a male or female asking me this question. No, I want her to tell me. I want her to say, I looked between my legs and this is what I saw. Did I get an answer? No answer? <laughs> when you get ready to tell me what you see, I'll tell you what you are. That way you won't be confused no more. So don't tell me about your emotions. I mean, your, your emotions don't dictate your sex. Amen? Sex is not a race. So don't say we, 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 we uh, prejudice. Sex ain't a race. Sex is a lifestyle. Amen? Your behavior is a lifestyle. It's not a race. Amen. So give me the next question because they don't want to tell me what they see. If we, if we aren't supposed to have the spirit of fear, how do I defeat being scared of things? How do I defeat? Being scared of things? Scared of things? Get saved. Get saved. Y'all answer. Listen, though, I'm not trying to be so anal where I just, you know, because Jesus said he have not given us. It ain't that you ain't supposed to have a fear of the spirit. Jesus have not given us. A spirit of fear. So the question is, do you have Jesus? If you got Jesus, he said, I didn't give you that, John. That's why I'm not afraid of nothing. 
Jesus gave me a sound mind. Hallelujah. In other words, John, don't be afraid. No weapon formed against you. John, think it's not strange to try. John, I made the ways to John. If your ways please me, I let no, I, I won't let nothing but good things happen to you. So what are you saying? If you got the Holy Ghost and you saved, then Jesus saved you. You shouldn't have no fear. But if you're not saved, then Jesus haven't given you his spirit, and that's why you're afraid. Without the Holy Ghost, you better be afraid. Hallelujah. You better, you better duck and roll and run and hide. But if you got the Holy Ghost, you don't have to run and do nothing. Because I'm not, listen, being saved, I don't live a life that causes me to be afraid. I like that, Lord. I don't live a life that instills a, a fear in me. I'm not afraid of the police because I ain't out breaking the laws. I'm not afraid of dying in a car accident because I don't drink and drive no more. I'm not afraid of dying, period, because I have to die to get where I want to go. And Jesus gets to choose how he want to kill me. I'm not afraid of losing my wife because she's going to die. I'm not afraid of losing my children because they're going to die. You know, I'm not afraid of the world acting a fool because the Bible says it's going to happen. In other words, I've been told everything going to happen, so what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of what's going to happen when I've already been taught that it's going to happen because Jesus has let me know, John, I'm going to kill your wife. Now, I ain't decided if I'm going to kill you first or her first, but she's going to die. John, I'm going to kill your boys. I'm going to kill your daughter. I'm going to kill your grand. John, I'm going to kill all your church members. I'm going to kill them all. Now, I ain't quite figured out who going to die first yet, but they going to die. So what are you afraid of? Uh, well, I don't want the saints to die. John, they going to die. What are you talking about? So you might well get over that fear because it's appointed on the man to die. And after that, the judgment. So why am I going to walk around worrying about everybody dying? And when God said, I'm going to kill everybody, everybody going to die. And y'all walking around afraid, I don't want my mama to die. Okay, when you want to die? Give me a date. Give me, give me a date when you want her to die. Let me see if I'm going to agree with you. Because I'm going to kill her. Get that. Amen. Hallelujah. What a, oh, glory. Hallelujah. So you see how I'm saying how you get rid of the fear? You get saved, accept reality, and fear goes away. Just know this. When you die, you're going to mourn. I mean, when they die, you're going to mourn. But your mourning, the Bible says saints don't mourn like sinners. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Uh, why did you start COVID and end Kobe? Hallelujah. Why did he start COVID-19 and kill Kobe? Who's Kobe? No, I'm, I, I remember they asking God. God said, who's Kobe? God said, I don't know Kobe. Kobe didn't do nothing for me. God said, I kill folks every day that I don't, I don't know. So I killed Moses, and he was my friend. I killed Jesus, and he was my son. I killed, I killed uh, uh, Samuel, and he was one of the best prophets I ever had. Oh, and David? Ooh, man, I killed David. Now, David was my homeboy. Hallelujah. And you talking about Kobe? Kobe who? That, that basketball player? That, that basketball player that, that didn't treat me right? I don't care nothing about Kobe. I kill babies. And you think I wouldn't kill Kobe? I let him hung around and fool y'all. He made a sucker out of all y'all, didn't he? Y'all run around buying all his clothes and y'all won't go to church and talk to me one time. Y'all running around spending all that money for his shoes and I can't get you to buy one Bible. Kobe? Hmm. You lucky I didn't let the COVID kill him. God said, I don't want to hear nothing about that. I'm asking me no questions like that. You want the answer? Who's Kobe? Kobe is nothing to me. That was just another person that disobeyed me. Somebody said, well, you don't know where you're talking to God. Now, all of a sudden, I ain't God no more, huh? You ask God a question, I give you an answer, now, all of a sudden, John talking. So, uh, you know, God know how to go in and out of John real quick. Because I'm telling you something, Kobe didn't mean nothing to me either. You understand? He, was, he meant something while he was alive, but when he died... Never met the brother. Amen. I don't wear nothing with his name on it. But I wear, do I have Jesus only on this one? I got Jesus. Amen. Jesus all in my church name. 
Hallelujah. What am I saying? God said, y'all think I worry about everybody that's dying? Listen, I don't want no soul to go to hell. Now, I say this. This is God talking. I don't want no soul to go to hell. But let's get something straight. I give everybody an opportunity to get saved. And if you choose not to get saved, I'll kill you like I killed Kobe. Next question. Je Jehovah Witness believes there's no heaven or hell. What do you think about that? Crazy, crazy. Let me ask you something. If there's no hell or heaven, then why don't we all do what we want to do? You know, why don't we all go do what we want to do? Why, why do we have preachers? Why, why? I mean, just think about it. If there's no benefit, I hate to be so wrong, I mean, so strong. If there's no benefit, what's the point? It's got to be a benefit. Every job you got, you took it because there was a benefit. You ever took a job and said, well, I'm going to work, but I ain't going to get paid. Jehovah Witness, I'm going to work, but I ain't going to get paid. So what's the benefit? What's the benefit of going to work? You really like going to work, spending all your day, come home to sleep in a shack or nothing, sleep in a box on the street, but you go to work. So what's the benefit? If there's no benefit in being saved and serving God and reading the Bible, What's the benefit? Why do it? Y'all done heard me say many times over, I go, and I, you know, you know, I think that, that I know people that live some good lives, a lot of folk, but if I really had to choose a life to live, if there was no hell or heaven, i choose, y'all know who wouldn't it? The man that had brought up with Playboy. It ain't all about sex. That man had money and sex and houses and planes and, and he had everything that life could possibly Oh, These movie stars they don't have what that brother had. Nobody got what that brother got. Trump ain't got what he got. That boy had, and he did it openly and didn't care about, now if I would, if it was no hell or heaven, I'd have went met him. <laughs> Do y'all understand? Amen. But there, but there's hope beyond the grave. So therefore, I don't want none of that stuff he had. I want what Jesus got. So you see, it don't make no sense if there's no hell. Where we going when we go? Where we going? We might have. Uh, I think Solomon put it like this. So he said. Uh, we might as well eat and be happy and be merry since ain't nothing. No, Paul said it. He said, since ain't nothing after this, we might well enjoy this and do it since ain't nowhere to go after this. Jehovah Witness is wrong, y'all. That's all it is to it. Come on. Next question. Hold up. Dee, Dee got one. Okay, so the person. Y'all not getting any questions? I guess young folk, y'all young folks on Instagram, y'all got some questions. All I got is church members on that one. Nobody on this? Which one is this? That's your? You ain't got no friends. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. I'm having fun. Come on. Come on. What's okay, so he broke it down. He said, please explain Acts 1, 21 through 26. Hold on. Start over. What do you say? He said, please explain Acts 1. Wait a minute. Stop for a second. Do you have glasses? <laughs> okay. Read. He said, please explain Acts 1, 21, 26, the giving forth of their locks. Hold on. Acts 1, 26. Acts 1, 21 through 26. Okay. Wherefore, Acts 1, 21 through 26. Everybody, let's go. He said, wherefore, of these men which have companion with us, com companion with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, being from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, we must be one ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed to Joseph called Barsabbas, Bar who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, 
from which Judas, the transgression, failed that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and, they, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. What happened here, they thought that they could go and choose the 12 apostles. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Nobody chooses pastors, preachers, apostles, but Jesus Christ. This is where they messed up at. They went and cast lots. First mistake, they thought they could choose. Second mistake, they rolled dice to decide. They should have went into prayer and supplication and made the decision. Now, first of all, nobody can choose pastor. That's why you got so many jack leg preachers out here because some pastor, some individual done made them an elder, made them a minister, made them a pastor because somebody said it and God didn't say it. So they made Paul was chosen as the 12th apostle. The 12th apostle, God had already chosen who he was going to choose. God let this get in the Bible to show us the mistakes we can make. Go and follow the Bible. Matthias don't come up no more because he didn't do nothing. He probably went somewhere and started doing what he wanted to do. He probably went and opened up his own private business and never got to preaching the word of God, but he thought he was a preacher. Why you say it like that? Because there's plenty of people that get saved and want a business on the side and say they're in the business of saving souls. Let me tell you something. When you call to do this, when you call to do this, this is the only business you got. Hallelujah. And so they went and they cast lot. That meaning they were shooting dice. In other words, they took some dice or what they call lots and they casted them. And when it fell on, on Matthias, oh yeah, that's who God wants. See, y'all let a person get up and call they a good orator don't mean they called to be nobody pastor. Maybe they can talk a little bit and exhort the word of God providing that they have the Holy Ghost. But if they don't have the Holy Ghost, they ain't got no business opening their mouth on nobody's pulpit. That's why I don't allow it. That's why folks at Church of Apostolicity, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can't do nothing but sit down and shut up and listen. And I make that plain, I make it bold. And if you join the church, and you tell me you got saved and you got the Holy Ghost, you still ain't going to do nothing until I say so. And my first rule is, I want to hear you speak in tongues. You can say, Pastor Porter, I got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say, yeah, until I hear you, you ain't got nothing. Somebody say, well, you a judge? Yes, I am. You the jury? Yes, I am. You the prosecutor? Yes, I am. Because I can't afford to let nobody sneak in here and cause confusion. And then... If, let's assume you got the Holy Ghost. Now I gotta watch your lifestyle. Cause my first question is, God didn't tell me you was coming. Now God don't tell me when sinners are coming, but if you coming with the Holy Ghost, God gonna tell me. So the first problem I have, God didn't tell me you was coming. And then the second of all, why didn't you leave your other church? Why did you leave your other church? Or why did you come from the street and think you can prophesy on me? Won't work. Too many people are being put in places without God approval. That's what this scripture is all about. Amen. Too many people are being put in, in let, me, let me rephrase it, and put in important places and don't know the word of God. So they chose him and it fell on him, but he was never accepted as an apostle by God nor Jesus Christ. Because Paul said he was the least of these apostles. And the last time I checked, if Paul was an official apostle, that make 13, and there's only 12 gates up there. And they only got the name of 12 apostles. And so where's that 13th one coming in? So either Mathis, Math, uh, Matthias is a liar or Paul is a liar. And since Paul gave me a lot of help and Matthias didn't write nothing, guess who I believe? Amen? I hope that explains it for you. Next question. We running out of questions? No. I mean, no. I, I have one right here. <laughs> okay. It says, what does the Bible say about sex before marriage? How does the Bible define a, mar a marriage? Sex before marriage is fornication. So whenever you hear that word fornication, it's either physical, natural fornication, or spiritual fornication. That's why God called, uh, when God called you a whore, he's calling you a whore because you are committing adultery spiritually, meaning that the fact you are married to him in the body of Christ, that's why he called Israel that. And now, what was the second part of it? S something about how do you define marriage? Yes. When, uh, there's a scripture, give me a second. 
the best one. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to, uh, is it Matthew? When, um, when um, Joseph was espoused to be married. Now, I could go to the Old Testament and show you it's a ceremony that takes place. But let's just go to Matthew chapter what? Probably chapter 1. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. No. Chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew. Now, I'm, because of time, I'm not going to go to the Old Testament, but you go over there. When, 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 um, when uh, uh, they got a wife for, was it uh, Abraham, Isaac. When they got a wife for Isaac, they went and got her from her kindred, and they had a ceremony. And if you go and look, each time a wedding took place, there was a ceremony. Amen? But I want to show you something. I'm, I'm going to get a little more deeper than a ceremony. Chapter 1, verse 18. Said now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Espoused meaning engaged. Now let me let me go deeper for you. When you ask a woman to be your wife and she say yes, in the eyes of God, because of your heart, you're already married. You're already married. But the rule is you have to go through the ceremony. If you ever got married in the United States, you are married when you leave that courthouse. When you fill out that paperwork, you are married. But we go and we perform a ceremony because we want to show everybody that we are officially married. Now, notice he said that, uh, that they was a spouse before Joseph, before they came together. That means before they had sex. Before they had sex, if you go over in the Old Testament, they talk about when you know uh, Adam got to know his wife. That's referring to sex. Amen. Now, you may say, well, they're using the word sex. Well, you got to trust the teacher, you know, because if you don't know how to go and research Hebrew and Greek to understand their way of talking, then you're not going to you're not going to believe me. And I can't make you believe me. But <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Honey, get me something to drink. <clears throat> Sorry about that. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So he, he's saying they never came together, but she was pregnant. So how did she get pregnant and they ain't had no sex? So you can't have sex until you get married. Y'all can't come together. Shacking don't work. Shacking. You want to get to know, if you love that person so much, why ain't y'all married? You know why? Because y'all don't love each other that much. Because y'all thinking that somebody else going to come along better. Listen, when you say, I do, you're telling each other, ain't nobody else coming along better. This is it. So why do y'all hold off on getting married? What's the purpose? Because y'all not ready to trust that individual with everything yet. And, and it's got men and women, and sometimes it's both. Well, you know, we don't have to be mad. We ain't got to prove to nobody. We know we love each other. Now prove to yourself. Marriage ain't to prove to other folks y'all together. Marriage is to prove to each other. Y'all are together. I say it again. Marriage don't prove to me y'all love each other. Marriage proved to y'all y'all love each other. Because y'all have made a openly outright commitment that nobody, I ain't getting in the bed, I ain't kissing, I ain't showing nobody disaffection but you, honey. So why don't you get married? Because y'all are afraid, because y'all don't trust, y'all don't really love each other. So y'all stop thinking marriage is something to satisfy other people. Marriage is something to satisfy the individuals. Amen? So that's why he was going to put her away. And God said, oh, no, Joseph, you can't put her away. That's my baby. And Joseph had to believe that. Amen? Come on, next question. Okay, this is from Snapchat. It says, why did marrying more than one person stop in the New Testament? Say that again. Why did marrying one per more than one person stop in the New Testament? And why did, why did marrying one person, more than one person stop in the New Testament? Because God was replenishing the earth. Not, I like that word. Replenishing. What did he, let me think for a second. Okay. Because I was going to take y'all somewhere. I had to ask God. And God said, nope, don't take him there, John. God 
had to replenish the earth. Don't y'all know anything is right if God says it's right. I'm, I'm going to take my time for a second. If God says it's right, it's right. For instance, I'm the pastor of this church. Let me give you an example. I'm the pastor of this church. And I say, you can't come in this church in pants. Women can't walk in this church in pants. Men can't walk in this church in short pants. Men can't walk in this church in, sh in short pants and open toed shoes. That including sandals. I don't care how fancy they are. Amen. Women can't walk in this church in pants. Now, I don't like them in here in braids, but I won't put them out. You come in here in pants, I'll put you out. You can't come in here. I put you, I tell you, go back out the door. Now, you say that's hard, okay? Let's, let's freeze for a second. You can go to another church that can let you walk in in pants. Who's right? Tell me who's right. The person that's in charge of that church has the right to set their own rules. Now, we're not going to get into the point whether they're disobeying God at this in, in this particular uh, description. The fact is, the ruler of that house get to choose. The ruler. There was a time where women could not wear pants in the courtroom. They only changed that maybe about 10, 15 years ago. Everybody else, but you can wear pants at your house, you can wear pants to the beach, you want, but you can't come in this courthouse with them. And nobody broke that rule because they kicked them out. So let me tell you, God is the one that's in charge. He decides what he wants to do. So when God say, when God say, don't marry, I mean, when God say, you can marry however many people you want, he said, I'm okay with that. Now, what people don't realize, they was marrying their brother and sister. Now, what y'all don't realize, you're still marrying your brother and sister. We call them cousins now because we all came from Adam. So if God say you can have two people, then don't you sweat it. Now, if God say now, one, then you got to change the rule. Because another pastor can come in here after I'm gone and let y'all break all my rules. But he's in charge. So he has to give an account of the rules that he has set up. God gives an account for his own rules. And nobody, see, and here's the thing. Nobody get to tell God he's wrong. Nobody. Watch this. Nobody get to tell John Portis he's wrong. You can come in here and say, I'm wearing pants. You can't put me out. I tell these security guards, grab you and throw you out on your head. And the police are going to be on my side because I asked you to leave. I wasn't disrupting. That's my determination. You're disrupting the service because I asked you to get out. I remember I went to a funeral one time and, and the daddy... I believe it was the daddy or the uncle or some came in with a hat on in the church to the funeral. And the pastor asked the gentleman to take the hat off. He said, I realize you got on an African outfit, you know, but in this church you don't wear a hat. That brother sat down and the pastor asked him again. And the brother sat down and the pastor sat on the pulpit and let it happen, but he was hot the whole service. I counseled the whole funeral. I said, you got two choices here. Either you get up and get out of here or take that hat off your head or this service is over. I'd have told the mortuary, pack her up and get her out of here and all y'all go. We ain't having no church service. That hat is coming off your head or you getting out of my church. I don't care about people's feelings when it comes to my rules. Now, I'm just a human. Now, if I got that much tenacity, can you imagine the tenacity God has? What am I saying? Just because God allowed something back then and he said you can't do it no more, you don't have the right to question him. Just do what he tells you to do. Amen. He had his reasoning why he did what he did. Amen. And it would take a two-hour Bible class for me to really break it down and show you. I don't have time for that. Amen. If God had me preach it one day, then I'll preach it. But until then, you just know whatever rules he give you, just obey his rules. And it's okay to ask the question. I'm not trying to beat you up because you asked the question. I just want you to understand God is sovereign. That means whatever rule he make, that's the law. I'm sovereign at Church of Apostolicity. Whatever rule I make, that's the law. And I make you obey it. Don't worry about it. Notice I use the word make. 
I will make you obey it. Amen. Now, I'm lenient, just like God, to give you patience. I mean, I'm patient, but at the end of the day, you're going to obey my rules. Amen? Or you're going to find yourself out. You're going to obey God's rules. And then when you end up in hell, look up, and, and, and I'm not saying you. I, I answer questions in totality. All of y'all that got problems with God's rules, when you get to hell, look up and question it. See if he respond to you. See if he respond to you. I wanted something hot, but I didn't specify it, huh? I'm sorry, yeah, give me something hot. Uh, next question. No more questions? I'm going to close yeah. down service. I ain't got no why, questions. Why did the corona come to life, and why do people dislike God? Hold the second one. Let me get the first one out of my head. Why did it come to life? Because God ready to kill folks. Pestilence. See, I, I can make it nice and pretty, but at the end of the day, the bottom line is God allowed it. Why did God allow it? Because he's ready to take some folks out of here. He said pestilence in diverse places is going to come. Go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul. They tell you God is going to send virus. Now, Isaiah even said he sent the waster. It's designed to kill people. Why is God wiping people out? Because folks ain't doing right. Y'all not doing right, and God is tired of it. People are not living right. Judgment is in the land, and the people repent. People, listen, listen, listen. Let me let me share this. Let me share this thought with you. Then, I'm, then you give me the second question. The COVID is here killing people. Folks are still getting shot. Gang bangers are still shooting people. Folks are still dying from cancer. Folks are still dying from car-related accidents. My wife had an accident, printed in her own driveway, messed up her whole right hand and stuff. Uh, uh, folks are still dying from aneurysms and heart attacks and high blood pressure. Those deaths have not stopped. Folks still dying from smoking cigarettes OD, they still finding dead bombs on the street. They still finding bodies chopped up in places. Amen. Folks are still killing their wives and killing their husbands and shooting folks. That didn't stop. But you don't hear about those deaths. Actually, those deaths total more than the COVID. But y'all are in a panic because of this COVID uh, uh, virus. And now that's the big hoopla. Now, watch this. The report is dying down. They're not telling y'all so much. Then this big riot break out. Now, y'all have spread the COVID 20 times over again and don't even realize it. The death toll is gonna skyrocket because now they ain't testing. So they done lost count of where all of those people were that had it and now the death toll gonna increase again. And then y'all gonna be worried and y'all gonna blame God for it. Listen, it's because of sin. Y'all won't do right. The government have done a great job, in my opinion, doing, telling us how to control it. We was getting control over it. But watch this, and it goes into the second question, why people don't like God. See, y'all don't like the government. They was getting a handle on it, and then y'all had a fit about, about uh, 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 stores and beaches being open and y'all don't know y'all don't know they trying to tell you we trying to get a control over this thing but y'all keep fighting up so the president came out and said listen imagine this 50 percent of the world want to get in the street and 50 percent said we'll wait mr president which 50 percent do you satisfy now, y'all saying it's political? It probably is, and I, I wouldn't blame it if it is. That, he got to make a decision, so he got to make a decision best on the, be, based on his best decision. So he came out and said, we open it. Now, he just threw the ball back in your court. So if you know that Church of Apostolicity did, then had five cases reported, why would you come to the church? Because the president said, oh, yeah, you can go over there, you're going to catch the virus, and you're going to go. Why would you go to the beach and the clubs and all of this when he's telling you that that was one of the known places where the virus was being spread and y'all are fighting to go? So go, go ahead, go ahead, do what you want to do. Amen? Do what you want to do. So when y'all get, y'all catch it, then y'all going to say, well, the government ain't looking out for us. Now, listen to yourself. 
You complain it because you couldn't go, and when you caught it, it's somebody else's fault. Why don't people like God? Because they always want to put the blame on somebody else. Do you really think, do you really think, do you really think, do you really think God doesn't like you? He don't like sin. But now, if you, watch this. If you break the laws of man, look at the result. So when, what you think going to happen when you break the laws of God? So people don't like God because they claim it's God's fault for everything. Now, technically it is because he made everything. But uh, it's amazing how you can avoid a lot of issues if you just obey his commandments. Because he said, no, no good thing will I withhold from him that live and walk up right before me. And watch this. When a saint die, regardless of how we die, we don't look at death the way sinners look at death. How in the world, outside of the rapture, am I going to get to heaven? I have to die. So what's going to kill me? Is it COVID-19? Is it a heart attack? Is it a stroke? Something has to kill me. I have to die to get there. Saints look forward to die. We welcome death. Going back to the fear question, we don't fear death because death to us is not death. Death to us is going home. So people don't like God because he got a lot of restrictions. Watch this. Folks don't like the government because they got a lot of restrictions. But the restrictions are for your benefit. The restriction that God has is for you, me, everybody benefit. When you break the law. Now, I don't know how the COVID got started. Somebody say Trump made it. Okay. Somebody say China made it. Somebody say man made it. You know what? They're right. Somebody did make it. But somebody made it out of an evil attitude. Now, is that God's fault? Why didn't God kill him? Why don't God kill you? Have you done something evil lately? So why haven't God killed you? You want God to kill people that, that, that make COVID, but you don't want him to kill you for your drinking, your smoking dope, your getting high. You're breaking laws just like they broke a law. They broke a law that you didn't like. Well, I don't like the fact that when I walk out of here, there's a liquor store in my corner. So what, what, what's going to happen? So God going to go around killing everybody, then we all have to die because we all are guilty of something. Do you get what I'm saying? So people don't like God is because they don't like laws. This is a lawless generation. They don't want no law. They want to do what they want to do and want everybody to accept what they do. It, 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 you, anytime somebody point out wrong in somebody, something wrong with that, are you judging? But you're wrong. Nobody want to be told they're wrong. And all, let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, 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 people that don't like God, you know, one, you know one thing people that don't like God, they have in common? They're smart. They smarter than they realize. You know that? You know why people don't like God? Because they don't like the Bible. You know why they don't like the Bible? Because they know all this Bible does is point out wrong. <laughs> they know that. That's why I don't like it. Because every time I read it, he's killing somebody. He's telling me what I can't do. I, I don't believe no God. Ain't no God going to do it. See, they don't like it because they know. Listen. They know this is right. They know all it does. See, they smarter than these old jack leg preachers that preach prosperity. They know. Everything in here is talking about, listen, there was, there was this one guy in the Bible, they told him the seer would come. I don't want to talk to him. Kill him. Every time he come, there's doom. Because he knew any time a prophet showed up, you were doing something you had no business. And God is about to tell you, either get right or I'm going to kill you. Listen, that's why folks don't like to hear me preach. They say, every time I preach, I'm cutting them up. Well, did you do it? Did you lie yesterday? Well, I'm talking to you. Did you steal? Did you get high? Did you drink? Did you fornicate? Did you, commit did you do something wrong yesterday? If you didn't do nothing wrong, why are you upset? Because I point out your wrong? That's why folk don't like God. Because all he does is point out wrong. Listen, I think that's wonderful. That's why I love him so much. Because he always pointing out wrong. Amen? Next question. What is the best order for a first-time Bible? You mean the, the first Bible they should buy? First time. 
Okay, let me say something, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, then I, I give you one, but let me say this first. First of all, it's got to be a King James. Not no new King James, not no standard, not no international, not no, it's got to say, what, KJ, KJV. Three letters, KJV, King James Version. Don't buy no other version, number one. Number two, the Open Bible by Nelson is a very good beginner's Bible. Very good. But let, 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 me, let me tell you something about Bibles. In the Bible, you get, you get what you call comments. See, this is the Bible up here. The chapter, these down here are comments. That is not Bible. That's men or a group of men got together and gave their interpretation on what that scripture meant. Now, why I say Nelson, the open Bible? Because that was my first Bible and it helped me tremendously. And they, there are comments in the Bible, but they're, they're very good comments. They off sometimes. So understand when you get that Bible, because if I give you one with no comments, you won't, it, 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 you, it, you, you won't keep up. So I got to give you one that gives you some comments. And I found out personally that the Nelson gave less and best comments than any other version. Now, as I've gotten older, because I know the Bible now, I read the other ones. And they are very good, but I know when they're on and I know when they're off. As a, as a baby saint, which I wasn't quite a saint because I wasn't saved, but I was still going to church. I wasn't sure when they was on and when they was off. I based everything on what my pastor said versus what their comments were. So what I'm saying, get the Nelson Bible. It's called the Open Bible. Make sure it's the King James Version, but watch the comments. Don't get hung up on the comments. Just read the scripture. They are, and, and I say this, and not that they paying me for it, their comments is about 85 to 90% always right. Now, when they're wrong, God is going to have to help you and let you know when they're wrong. But see, if you go to a church and you have a church home, and I'm talking about Church of Apostles, listen to I ain't talking about nobody else. You know, if you come here, you'll know when they own and you'll know when they off. Now, a good study Bible, but you got to be ready to study, is, 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 um, Thompson and Chain, they make no comments. They just tell you how to reference scriptures retain, related to a particular scripture. And they'll give you a whole bunch of, like if you talk about fornication, it'll give you a whole bunch of scriptures on it. But are you ready to do this and study it? You know, that's what you're gonna have to do because they, they have you all over the Bible. Now that's the number one numero uno head honcho when it comes to studying the Bible. Now, after you're saved for a while, I could give you a better study Bible, but I won't give you that one because if you're new to the Lord, that one will mess you up because they're deep and they, when they get off, they get off. But when they're on, they're on. But you have to know your Bible to be able to keep up with them. So the best Bible to start off with, with anyone that really want to get a new Bible is the, is the Nelson Bible. It's called the Open Bible. And when you buy you a Bible, buy you a leather Bible. Don't buy these old uh, imitation leather and all that. Spend some money. Get you a good Bible. Get you a good Bible because you're going to, you, that, that Bible, if, if you're really interested, it's going to take you a long way. You don't want nothing tearing up on you. And, and even though it's leather, put a cover over it. Put a good cover over, good leather, invest in leather when it comes to the Bible. You know, stay away from cloth and imitation and fake and all of that. Man, we're talking about something that's going to help you for the rest of your life. So spend some money on it. Amen? Do I read it in order? No. That won't help you. I tell you what you start off reading. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Read that for about a year. Just stick with them three chapters for a while. Them three chapters tell you how to get saved, stay saved, make it to heaven. Now, I'm talking about for you to read. Now, people say, well, all that, listen, you want to do it right, don't you? Now, in that, 
Go to church and let the pastor tell you. No, come to church and let me tell you how to read interchangeably between all of that. But wake up every day for the rest of you, for the one year. Read Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7. Now, let me tell you something else since you're asking me. I, I like the question. The other scripture I want you to read is Psalm 91 every day. Every day. Don't ever go to bed and, and don't read Psalm 91. You got that? I hope you're writing this down. Now, this is another scripture I want you to read. I want you to read Psalm 5. I want you to read Psalm 5 every morning you wake up. Is it 5? Yeah, I want you to read Psalm 5 every morning you wake up. You won't help. I'm telling you, this is what I did for years. I can't even remember. I could, I had got to the point I could quote Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. I could quote Psalm 4 and 5 and Psalm 91 without, without blurring, without messing up. Read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 every day. Read the book of Psalm 91 every day. Every morning, read Psalm 5. And every night before you go to bed, read Psalm 4. Psalm 5 tells you how to wake up and give God praise. Psalm 4 tells you how to go to bed and give God praise. Psalm 91 reminds you how important you are. Chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew tells you how to get saved, stay saved, and make it to heaven. The whole Bible revolves around those three chapters. If you, because he's very precise to the point he don't beat around the bush amen so you read what that five books a day right not five book but five chapters five six seven four and five and something six if you can read those six chapters every day until god say different i guarantee you you won't miss heaven i can guarantee you that that's a guarantee i stake my life my reputation and my salvation on it but you do it until God tell you to stop. Because I can't tell you when to stop. Because only God going to know when you got it. But I can tell you this. If you come to Church of Apostolicity, I can tell you when to stop. But without being here, I can't help you. Amen? Amen. Everybody got it? Do I need to repeat that? Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Every day. Psalm 91. Every day. Psalm 4 and 5, every day read Psalm 5 in the morning and 4 before you go to bed. 5 before you leave the house, 4 before you lay down to sleep. And I, you watch it. You watch what God will do for you. Amen? Next question. Is the rapture starting? Rapture started the day Jesus got out the grave. It's just getting closer. I'm on my way to Texas. When I got up to get in the car, I, I started the moment I wanted to go to Texas. But I'm on the road and I'm almost there. What am I saying? When Jesus got up out the grave, actually I could go back to the beginning of time, but I'm going to be nice. When Jesus got up out of the grave, that's when the rapture started. Amen? So you just have to wait not until the day it happened. But just make sure you read it when it happened, though. Next question. I went to sleep and I couldn't move but was awake and can hear every, everything. Scientists say it's sleep, R-E-M, and some people say it's demons. Scientists say it's just what? It's R-E-M. Okay. And, and, and some people say it's uh, demons. If you say... What's your thoughts? Sometimes y'all can ask some amazing questions. <laughs> Let's get something straight. Once you get saved, there's no demons on the inside of you. When you're not saved, you got demons. I don't care if you're newborn, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you got demons. Until the Holy Ghost come in, you got demons. After the Holy Ghost come, there's no more demons in you. Now, if you are laying there and can't move, that's God doing that. I'm talking about saved people first. This is only if you say it. I'm talking about, when I always mean, when I say say, I'm talking about baptizing in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Without that, in my mind, you're not saved. So if you say, 
that's God doing something to show you. Now you got to go and ask God, what mean is this? What's the purpose of this? Somebody say it's a sickness. Okay. It could be a sickness, but why is God putting it on you? That's what you need to know. Don't worry about what the sickness is called. Ask God, why is he putting it on you? Because all things are supposed to work together for your good. So you need to figure out, what am I supposed to learn from this? Now, if you're not saved, it could be sickness, it could be demons, it could be laziness, it could be anything. I personally don't see no need for God to put something on you. Notice I said I, personally to keep you laying in the bed unless he done told you to do something you've been ignoring him. So have you been disobedient to something specific that he told you to do and you know you've been disobedient. So he's waking you up to remind you you better do what I say. You know, because there was one time God, a couple of times actually, but I'm just remembering one specific. I'm, going, I'm not going to tell you what it was. But one time I didn't obey God and God did something. I said, Lord, why? He said, because you didn't do what I told you to do. But Lord, John, you knew I told you and you didn't do it. So now if you want me to get this monkey off your back, then you go back and do what I told you. I went back and did what he told me, monkey left. So what am I saying? Sometimes we can be disobedient. It's kind of like you, you, you punishing your child. Oh, Mama, you ain't gave me no, no, no allowance. Well, you ain't been cleaning up the kitchen in your room either. You want your allowance, then I expect that to get clean. So what am I saying? God said, when you're disobedient, I ain't no telling what I'm going to take or give you. I might give you something. Amen? Next question. You through? Anybody else? No more questions. All right. I guess that's a good thing. And, and the service is only designed for that. Amen? So if we have no more questions, then I'm going to bid you all farewell. I'm not going to preach because if I take out one topic, <laughs> y'all know what that means. And we did good. Started at 1030. We almost went two hours. So that's a good thing. I love you all. And again, I wanted to remind you that all of you all that want to give and donate to the COA, I'm not begging. I'm just reminding you because people say, well, Pastor, you don't ever remind us. Tithes and offering. You can go to COATAD and Venmo. You can go to COATAD and, and uh, Cash App. Uh, somebody told me that you all keep it at the bottom. That's good to remind people if they want to give. Uh, you can mail your check in to the P.O. Box 3038. You can go to the website. You can do PayPal. Amen. I'm not going to give you all the other one because I would have to give you my cell number, but I'm going to change it to the email address. So when I change it, I let you all know what it is, uh, which is Zell. Amen. So anyway, you want to give by all means, whatever make you happy. I love you. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful evening and we'll see each other on Wednesday.